Oh my fucking god. I'm cracking a Red Bull because I want to be like hyper as fuck. I can't I'm cracking have Red a Bull. Mangarita. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mix my Mangarita with a peach Red Bull. Don't. Ooh. Here at the bar, yeah, we at the Bark Bark Meow crew do not <laughs> condone <laughs> mixing alcoholic drinks and energy drinks. Now you do whatever you like. Do, Live. Do this at your own risk. Live. <laughs> I'm not gonna Look, pretend I didn't have monsters and Jägermeister when I was Look, uh, they sophomore sell in college. Oh, Jager but... bombs at bars, thus it must be legal. Oh, I'm not saying it's not legal. It's just dangerous. Yeah, no, it's absolutely dangerous. Fuck. <laughs> Your body will take a screenshot. Oh no. I should be dead. I don't know how I drank so many of those and I'm okay. Well, uh, okay. I, I, I no, okay. I'm doing it now. I think my gut's trying to like leave my body. Damn. Let me finish this Sudoku. Oh, yeah. Solace is playing Sudoku now. Oh, dude. Fucking. I am on the roll. It's coming down quickly. I filled all but two squares now. So it's 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 about oh. done. Yeah, that's like the dummy e easy portion. Red Bull, but I could still hear you guys. And I, I want to just add, like, I haven't felt an emotion in three weeks. And I'm seeking anything I can. And if that's Peach Red Bull and Mangaritas, it is what it is. <laughs> Ruby, no. Hey, bud, you want to talk about something? <laughs> Not on the podcast! <laughs> Not in uh, front of the Broomby cult! <laughs> they can't we know that they're leader. shit I didn't want to talk about on the podcast. Uh, I cut no, it, obviously. No, but... cut it. Oh, that is... Hey, hey, you have the power to cut it. <laughs> I do. Sudoku! Sudoku! I Dude, I started playing that New York Times Connections game. That's actually kind of fun. Wait, is I don't that know the how word? much Red Bull the Mango Rita I should mix here. Uh, I stopped supporting New York Times with all their shit, 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 quote unquote journalism they do. Fuck. That. Oh, this is not good. Oh no. <laughs> we got like oh, this three different not discussions good. going on right go now. Go mix it. Go mix it with the Panera Death on the name. Oh god. Bro, no. Okay. We I have, have to park park the It's good in the drink. No, no. <laughs> you guys want to see the thumbnail for my video this week? Yeah. Sure. Is it your butthole? I want to see your butthole. That's making Whoa. the episode. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. No! E everyone needs to know what you say to me behind the scenes. Everyone I... needs to know how you treat me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Oh, dude, I don't care if you fucking leave it in. I mean, I do, but not really. It's not going to get me canceled. It might get Argo mad. And I, I never said it would get you canceled. I. That's not my goal. Speaking of which, have you guys seen how much, like, fucking bullshit people have been trying to cancel each other over for on Twitter. Like, I know that's the norm, but, like, dude, it's been so much worse these past I, couple weeks. Okay. I love let's, that fact, though. That's, like, that's like, so, oh, you know what? Great let's, segue. Let's get, uh, let's get real and just on our podcast right now, how do we feel about Pup Hoods? What's your personal opinion? Oh, we can get into this right here, right now. Um, yeah, let's fucking um, go. I'm cracking my clearly, knuckles. Clearly, kink gear, actually arrestable offense. You should go to jail. Pr no, prison. I'm sending you guys a picture of me in a pup hood. Sar sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I all right, thought all you right, were right. going to say butthole, Misha. No. <laughs> no. Misha, no. <laughs> I got to pay for that. I was gonna say that's for paying customers. Oh wait, you uh, you you did mention this, I think, on Blueski. I or did. Or did you yes. do it in the Telegram? I I knew you were gonna do this, and I I am excited to watch this because I want to see how far the rabbit hole goes. And because I did not do any of the searching, I watched the Moist Critical video. Uh, the Willy F Factory. The Willy and then McDuff. You can slap you can slap your thumbnail on here and self promo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the video is already out by the time this episode comes out, but uh. Yeah, I did a video about the Willy Wonka, Willy McDuff AI fiasco that happened in Glasgow, uh, oh, Scotland. God. Um, yeah, it's a it's an adventure. Gavin is having a hell of a time editing it because he has not the looked into unknown any of it. turning out Dude. to be a minor. Wait, what? <laughs> Yo, have you not heard this? I didn't know that. The unknown, like the you know n nobody knew who it was or whatever. They were seventeen. Oh my god! Oh no! Like they were a hired actor, and you can't yeah. act it like. But like everyone's like the unknown turning out to be a minor is the like what a <laughs> what a what a cherry on top of that absolute ice cream cake. God, but yeah, pup hoods are fine. It's another form of self expression. So Misha says self expression. How about you, Solus? Um. So true answer, non sarcastic. Um. 
it's not kink gear. It is it is just it, it's it's fine. Um, if your child is old enough to ask, then that's a conversation you need to have with your child. Uh, because most of them are not going to have a goddamn clue, and or you're doing the shit around your children, which is a whole other set of questions we're not going to answer. Personally, I, I'll go into this myself. I don't know if it's because it was, like, you know how leather, anything leather, uh, was, like, kind of, like, a kinky thing as a child. Like, I was raised, like, leather's kink, leather's kink. Yeah. Maybe even tab- taboo to an extent, like, oh, like, that's that's out there. Uh, <laughs> I'm fucking furry now, but... um. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's like, I don't know if it's an uncanny, Val- uncanny valley thing or the taboo thing. I get kind of weirded about, weirded out about pup hoods. I just don't let that make it a problem because it's just like a weird thing with me. It's like, if you don't like spiders, that's a you thing. It just kind of bothers me in a weird way. I'm working on it. And, uh, but like no hate towards anybody. I'm not going to say like, it's a thing you shouldn't do. They just personally give me the heebie-jeebie things. Yeah, but like, I don't know. That that's the big takeaway from this is you're allowed to not like pup hoods. You just can't. You can't sit there and tell other people they can't wear it because you don't like it. Right. It's know? how I think about clowns. I I don't like them at all. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, clowns are. But that's like, a whole other story. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I feel like the way I feel about clowns, I'm sure some people feel about pup hoods, but I'm also not going into clown communities. <laughs> yeah, I'm not glowing going into clown communities and be like, y'all fucking those, you disgusting. <laughs> and they do clown people totally fucking their clown gear. But I like, never thought that hard about it. But oh, I, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I also I also love this story because my first interaction with pup hoods was not in furry and it was not in kink gear. Oh. It was I was skiing and I saw somebody wearing the pup mask. He had helmet on and then the little face. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea, because when you're skiing, you actually need to cover up your face because the wind kind of hurts your face, for those who don't know. And there's little buttons on the pup mask on the side. And he just unbuttoned it and started talking to his buddy. And I was like, that's so cool. I thought pup hoods were sports gear for the <laughs> longest time. <laughs> no. I thought they were just a cute little sport. Like, oh, it's obviously a face mask for skiing, but you can it's also a dog mask because that's cute. That's what i thought they were and then when people started fucking in them i was like oh yeah some people fucking bike helmets too like that it has fursuits and people fucking fursuits and then and then this like this debate popped up and i couldn't even believe that because like i know that like first impressions matter and some people think that pup hoods are um like oh they've only like if you think that pup hoods are only for kink gear Please go to a convention that's not a furry convention. Go to an art festival. Go to anime. Go to a mu- Just go to, go a to mu- anime. No, well, and that's even too close for me. Go to a museum. Oh. Like, because people see a yaoi paddle at an at a anime <laughs> con and they freak out, too. I was going to say, there's, anime people are as kinky, if not worse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I feel like an anime well, con I guess, would be I guess you're trying to go action. for normalcy, I guess. Oh. Not normalcy. I'm trying to go, like, dude, there's so much more to life than oh, uh, than your fandom and your impression of the world. Well, I guess the question specifically is, is like you said, is pup hood kink gear? And no, it's not. It's just not. You can wear kink gear with pup hoods. You can wear kink gear with fursuits. You can wear kink gear with a fucking knight helmet on. And you're the sh- knight, sh- knight in shining armor with your sword ready you know wink some people argue uh, that like if you fuck in it it's kink gear well i guess you can't go barefoot anywhere God, then damn, I, get, I guess <laughs> i gotta take my glasses off now yeah that's all like all that shit i gotta, I gotta use my glasses to see and see it's part of the show for me it's way too close to the oh if she did wasn't asking for it she shouldn't dress like that Every- my sex my sexy dress is is for me and not you and it's sexy when i want it to be not when you want it to be uh yeah uh, yeah also random call out every dude that's you know all your socks are kink gear by the way dudes don't. Why would i don't you, like that why would you i don't like that? that at all <laughs> what the fuck? you know what i know you know what you know okay, okay uh, anyway uh, that's where the opening is at uh, the opening right there uh, he left. <laughs> could tell i wasn't wanted anymore yeah, you're you're right in this case. <laughs> you know, <laughs> episodes started out with you wanting to kick me. <laughs> what? It did? Yeah. I already forgot. Dude, my meds are wearing off. I already forgot how the episode Funny is, I already forgot what I said, but I said that thing, and you're like, <laughs> I'm keeping that in the episode. Oh, it's your butthole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Have you checked your butthole? Skidoo boo butt. Have we talked mm. about that yet? I swear we've talked about that on here. No, what? that was my friend Areo. There's a <laughs> there's a musical artist where one of his songs is called Have You Checked Your Butthole? It's so funny. Highly suggest that uh, you Sounds like a banger. It is a banger. Is it a problem if it's a banger and it's your butthole? No, that's that's a win. That's a W. It, yeah, that's um, a dub. This is this point of where I asked, are we going to now segue into what is... The... Let's talk about Cassidy 7. Okay. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I was going to say, because I was going to say, either that or we were going to do the furry drama wheel, but that can be held on, because I want to do, like, the actual wheel of the random, like, very yeah, big drama that hit. The f- the f- so let's just, let's roll into the Cassidy stuff, because it'll so, still be relatively fresh by next week. That's what I'm saying. It'll, like, I think and you know are what? coming if out. you want us to be fucking positive, we can even mention that it was said that, you know, they're trying to work on it. Whoa, whoa, you're skipping ahead. We, can... we also never did the intro, <laughs> so we gotta do oh, that first. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, just soft over what there, like, an, uh... and then put that in. I don't know. I okay, was talking but, about puppets, and I don't know if I can be a soft open. <laughs> so, for your, the viewer, <laughs> for the viewers' information, today? <laughs> for the viewers, uh, Solus is on one. For the viewers' Dude, information, sorry. we, sorry. Uh, Ca- this is not the first time Cassidy has come up in conversation, and we like this. We we started this podcast in the name of like kind of doing news and going over like. We all saw furry Twitter drama, and we were all interested in it, in the sense of we n- want to know what's going on in our community. But it's- we also don't want to be drama mongery, so we're like, if it's not actually important and relevant, or if there's not something like big to take away from this quote-unquote drama, we're just not going to talk about it. So we ended up not talking about Cassidy the first six times she popped up. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about how many times we didn't talk about Cassidy and that. But that's what I want to talk about. Whoa. I want to talk about the many many sins of Cassidy. Oh my god. Is that the episode? That's the title. Of the that episode. is the, the many that is the episode. deeds of Cassidy. Ca- that, you know, you know the rest. Oh, I made a joke. I made a joke that she's become more insufferable than Diesel and Two Griffin. And that's just cuz she's louder. Um she... I I don't use that as the title, but you could be like, is there a new who's the most insufferable like furry or something like that? Maybe I'll figure it out. Editing me should. I don't do think that she's more insufferable than two Griffin. I don't I, either. Well, in see in, in recent history, I'd say yes. Two. I, know well, I, yeah, I just don't see two arounds. And I think that's the same same thing with diesel is I just don't see their shit. And I see, and for the last several years, have only seen Cassidy's shit. Yeah, but Diesel's Cassidy is racist. certainly escalating. That's the thing is, it's been years at this point. It's been kind of nice. I haven't had to talk about fucking Diesel Raccoon in forever. He hasn't made a Whitey Furries episode. He was a staple when I first started that. He he pops up every now and then still because he's got that new account. But like, it's it, it's amazing how much uh, changing your brand will save you in the fandom. Yeah, he, I, for my knowledge. Keeps it with spaces that is safe, so. His safe space? He's not out there, like, denying insurrections and then saying that he'll inflate you big and round. That's so funny. I can't, I can't <laughs> believe how big that, that meme really got, dude. Like, like, legitimately, when it comes to, like, our fandom and the kinks involved and stuff, like, inflation and stuff, it is what it is, whatever. It's just, when you add the context behind that whole statement, that makes it so much more absurd. It's Dude, just, Jesus Christ! Dude. Oh, your mom died. Inflates you, making you pick it. No, up. no, no. <laughs> Dude, that meme got so big. Normies use that, and they I don't saw... even know why. Bro, I, I saw had that to in a Yugi. It Dude, I saw that in a Yu-Gi-Oh thread on Twitter. I was blown away. Neither of them were furries. Oh shit! Dude, That's what I... I'm saying. That that is like so. Yeah. There's a new group of furries out there that haven't caught that and, and aren't aware of it. It's great because they see the stuff and they don't understand. And you have to go like down like, all right, here's the big iconic inflates you big you round moment. This is why you don't want to like this person. Oh, fuck it. Back. We're getting off track. We are way off track. So, Cassidy. What happened? I actually, hold on. Do we want to introduce who they are first? Papama asked me what was going on on furry Twitter this week. So I actually have a summary that i wrote for him so i have a sort of script that i can go down for the past like week or so but cassidy cassidy is a musician a furry musician um much like your boy 
and she claims to be the pop star of the fandom, which is a bold claim, if I, you know, if I say so myself, especially with her track record, which we will get into. But like, you know, claiming that about yourself, sure, that's fine. I, I think it's good to have, you know, a little bit of an ego. I, I think you should believe that you are good at things. I think so, too. I think if you are an artist, promoting yourself as an artist is valid. Yeah, she has apparently appeared on Eurovision or one of her songs. To, I don't I don't really know about that one. Uh, she appeared on Canada's Got Talent, which she leaves it at that full stop. That sounds pretty good, right? The the audition didn't go well. That's all I'm going to say. She got four X's right away. And she, here's the thing. We knew she was gonna like. I'm actually watching the clip right now. Oh, God. Oh, no. Solace. You sweet summer child. <laughs> I am doing it on stir, uh, stir, I, very like, Saturday. I'm using um, it's her. It's kind of like when I went on the Anthony Padilla thing. Like, like I, I was like, oh man, I hope that wasn't too cringe. And he responds honestly. He's like, I mean, it's gonna be a little cringe. That's why people are watching. Normies are watching because they don't understand furries. They put Cassidy on the show because of the novelty of wearing a fursuit and singing. Yeah. And they were gonna cringe on her. And, like, honestly, sometimes that's okay. Some people go on Shark Tank knowing that even if you don't get a deal, just the amount of people who saw your product on Shark Tank, your sales will go up. There's no such thing as bad publicity in that sense. So I don't think her going on the show and even getting booed off the stage was a bad thing. No, that's actually a good way to, like, jumpstart your career. If she would have, like, you, you know, that's when you drop some music, you drop some productions... And uh, you you hype this shit out of it, and furry furry backs its own. So like in in a lot of ways, uh, it it would have exploded at least in our like our little community. But you know, I think that's where the disconnect with Cassidy and like reality is. <laughs> yeah. So you know, Cassidy has kind of popped up every so often because she's very loud about her opinions, which again, not necessarily a bad thing but it's just like always puts her opinion where it doesn't belong and just like the smallest thing will happen and she needs to like write a multi-paragraph thing about how bad it is and like how oh you know i i think this opinion i think this and that and it's like no one asked please please (laughs) stop doing that and like this on its own not even that big of a deal right that's all kind of confined in its own box who cares let's just look away and then she just kept doing it and the biggest one uh, i know they're a hot subject a right lot. now but like the biggest one that ultimately caused me to notice was with jt Weskey, where yeah he i was, was gonna like, mention that talk about like not <clears throat> like making a comment on something that needs no input this is going this is the concept of going out of your way to say something mean we didn't need to instead of um, yeah. you know what i'm gonna do because you have your own you're passionate about this i want let, let you go yeah and it's just like they were like oh i think they said like i want to write a song and Cassie no it was, was i can't wait to produce like release music for you guys i'm working oh, on yeah, something. that was it something like, very very much hey basically like i don't know if it was said i am working on something but it was very assumed look i'm pr- gonna be producing stuff because they've done cover like singing at conventions and other things as well so like oh, yeah, i'm gonna make some music um, and that's when Cassidy decided to just fucking... Yeah, Cassidy was like, well, just do it. Like, I, I did it. I do it all the time. You can do it. Da, da, da. Well, and like, it wasn't even that. It was worse. It was like, uh, you, you can't even call yourself a producer if you've never released music. It was God, straight yeah. up... Yeah, it was... it was a lot worse than just do it. It was... Yeah. You can't even call yourself a music producer or even a musician because you haven't made any. And it was just like... <laughs> holy shit why are you so aggro whoa and the next day the next day jt like posts a music thing and she's like uh i did that like oh yeah i inspired him i inspired him by being (laughs) mean to him on twitter.com i think it was actually twitter at the time no no it was x damn it Um, oh was it it was last year i don't know i don't know when that happened anyway the other big one, which I actually think happened before the JT, it might have been a little after, but they were close together. Uh, the the one involving Tiger, I know another hot topic person, but we're not we're not focusing on them. Um, <laughs> and so they posted a song, and Cassidy was like, "Sounds good. The vocals could use a little work, however." Oh, right. And like something about professional blah blah blah. 
and Tiger was like, I did this in a professional, like I did this in a studio and had somebody mix it for me. Like, like they paid how somebody professional to do it. can I get? <laughs> yeah. And it was just like, no one asked. <laughs> like, why are yeah, you trying to give professional? Asked yeah. Nobody asked you if it was like, if it was well, like, hey, let me know what you let me know what you guys think. Or like they sent it to them and they were like, hey, does this sound OK? Like it'd be completely different. But it was just like, hey, here's my release of a new song. And she was like, mm, the vocals are a, are a little off. Like, you know, I'm surprised it wasn't. Oh, those vocals are a little off. You know, next time we should work together and I'll help you. Oh like God, right. like one of those like high and mighty kind of things. Not even constructive criticism, because that's that's what you're looking for when you're going to post anything. I'm fine if you. So when I say quote unquote shit on a song, but if you do it in a constructive way, like you could, if the song's trash, the song's trash, right? Yeah. Uh, just do it constructively. Because other than that, you're just punching down. You're just being mean. You're not helping the process. You're actually dissuading the person from ever trying to do better. And uh, it's just, it's just more harmful in general. It literally is the golden rule of like, if you can't say anything nice at all, don't say anything. We don't need your fucking mean ass a comment. It's not an opinion. The world's shitty enough, you know. Like, yeah. If it's on, on one hand, I agree with you. On the other hand, like, it still kind of falls under didn't ask. Because, like, I don't know if Ruby can relate to this, but, like, if you post something you're working on and someone, like, critiques it out of nowhere, it's like, yeah. okay, I didn't really ask for that. I was just showing this to people, but thanks, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, no it's guess... weird. Like, like, it, and I here's what I think. I think it's obvious when critique comes from a good or a bad place. That's yeah. it. Because if I post it on Twitter and someone goes, oh, my God, I love the shapes here. Like, I would love to see it in orange. That's a positive way to public. This is also a public. Like, you can say whatever you want in public. You Like, you are putting something out there. It is available for critique. But it's so much different when you, like, let's say I post a piece of art and someone goes, I don't like cats. Like, that's how Cassidy would would post stuff. I like, fucking love that. Yeah. Um, like, I don't uh, like cats. Yeah, and it's like, okay, no one fucking asked you. Cool. <laughs> so that's all fine and dandy, right? Those two things happened, right. and then they died down, as furry Twitter does. So, again, you could kind of keep those confined in a box. That's, you know, Cassidy's a bully. It's the thumper meme. If you can't say something nice... <laughs> well, I will say, so, it, it's when you say keep them in the box, so... The the big thing that this does is this is showing this is showing a repetition of behavior That's and, and action. So they're not obviously like super big and cancelable by any means, but we're starting to build what is who you will know as Cassidy and why they're controversial. Yeah. With and the more later thing, but I don't know how <laughs> I'm gonna let you continue. You know what's crazy about you calling her controversial? Mm -hmm. Those are her words, not ours. She oh, no. calls herself she, controversial. Talk about she, literally, that? she literally calls herself the controversial uh, furry. Yeah, Ruby, so, didn't you like tweet something? Yeah, so let me search <laughs> for that real quick because here's the oh. story. Here's the story, viewers. I uh we were talking about Cassidy Civet. How, Months how ago, search... it got cut from the episode. It got cut because we're like, no, we don't want to do like drama or whatever. We don't yeah, yeah we want it to be important. So I tweet, who is this Cassidy Civet person and why do I keep hearing about them? This was August 2023. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a banger. And on November 8th, 2023. So I forgot that <laughs> Go they on. finally so this one this shows that they searched their name. Because this was months old. Let's count. August, September, October, November. Three months later, <laughs> they respond, I'm the fandom's villain of the week for speaking my mind. I haven't done anything more than piss off the majority of my unpopular opinions. XD face. Uh, so already we're sinning because we have an XD face. Yeah, strike one. Yeah. Also, can you send yeah. me a screenshot of that? That's, yeah, why you have yeah. to, that's why you have to X3. Uh, no, X3 is worse, Solas. What? <laughs> I'm the X3 wolf. You've seen it in all of my conversations. Solas, that's the most millennial thing you've ever said. Have you not? Do you not? Do you not no, I know. And I yeah. use the XD face, but yeah. I'm self-aware. Oh, you're just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> you're just a red flag. <laughs> uh, it's the my bandana. It's the red flag. Oh, my oh, God. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
So here's the thing. Cassidy, I was asking neutrally, who is this Cassidy civet person? You chose to introduce yourself as the fandom's villain. Why did you not say, oh, I'm a musician and a pop star. Here's one of my singles. No, you said to a random person who you appear to be knowing that I was saying that in good faith. I am the fandom's villain of the week for speaking my mind. I haven't done anything more than piss off the majority with my unpopular opinions. That is your self, like, that's your (laughs) self-description. Yeah. Nobody Uh, said that. (laughs) Yeah, you genuinely had no idea. Like, I Uh, think we mentioned it, and you tweeted that out at some point. We yeah, talked about, yeah. We, we, talked about were... we knew about her at some point, and I explained how I had met her at a con once. Yeah. Look, uh, someone else responded better than you. They said drama farmer, drama farmer and alleged pop musician. That is a better description <laughs> than <laughs> your own. That, that's so, like, that's so painful. I <laughs> respond, they, they farm drama. The person responds, yeah, weirdly antagonistic all the time to get engagement. Like, this person very much understands the plot. Yeah. I just, I just remember, I mean, again, I, part of me always wondered. Because, again, this has been going on for years now. There's years of things where she's said, quote-unquote, unpopular opinions to the majority of furry. Which, oh. that, should be, that should be a clue. That, like, it's one thing to be like, oh, somebody doesn't like something that I said. It's okay. But when it's an overwhelming majority saying something's wrong, maybe it's time to do some introspection to yeah. see where this sits. You don't just say hate is gonna hate because 99% of furry Twitter hates me. That's a problem. You're probably doing something or saying something wrong. Yeah, once you cross a line of, like, the majority starting to dog on you, you've got a bad opinion, you know? Like, I mean, there is the very rare case where it's like, why are you booing me? I'm right. But, like, odds are your opinion sucks, you know? Yeah. Um, right. But anyway, oh yeah, yeah, if you're responding to somebody and you get four likes, and the person responding to you says something like "shut up," and they get like 64 likes, just shut up. You just shut up. You're washed. Well, I didn't finish that thought, but the thought was: Are you are you doing this for clout? Are you taking any publicity as good publicity? Maybe she wants to be the villain. And part of me, for a while, is like, I think she does this to keep her name fresh in Twitter and, yeah. and all that. But you know what? After the years of this, she just thinks she's right. And she just throws shit out there because she can't fucking control herself. I think she'd be a better, more interesting person if she did this, knowing she was doing it for clout. I could make her just as hollow. No, I, I think I think I'd be like, you know what? Uh, uh, the grind's the grind. Kind of like when somebody is being a Twitch thought on purpose. I respect yeah. you a little bit more than the that. fact that you're absolutely oh. delusional. <laughs> Yeah. I do want to put this out there. I've never, and I never wanted to quote unquote dislike Cassidy Civet. When I met them in person, my initial reaction wasn't like, oh, I'm going to hate this person. Because, A, I didn't know, I didn't even know who they were. But that's what led to like the awkwardness of the conversation is they kind of led into the conversation thinking I would know who they were. And it just threw weird vibes. Yeah. And so it's just like, again, and then when you announce yourself as a villain instead of a pop star, maybe you're not really trying to be the pop star you want to <laughs> be. Right, but, but what did? Yeah, it's time for me. Should have hit him with yeah. the Yeah, last this thing is... I'll mention. Uh, like yeah. Solace was saying, we are scratching the surface with the things that Cassidy has said over the years. Like we don't have enough time to go over all the things. The two biggest ones that I mentioned, or that we mentioned, were two really big examples as of recently. But the straw that broke the camel's back, and the thing that has been happening this entire last weekend. Was, it pissed me off royally. Yeah, she uh, she got in. Oh, she was debating what counts as furry music again, um, which we've already we talked uh with Finn about that. Uh, check out that episode and check out Arl Alliance. Um, yeah, Arl. Ooh, that's something else we can yeah, talk about yeah. in the episode, maybe. Yeah. So stick um, around for the end of the episode to talk more about Arl Alliance, an event they just had. Oh yeah, right. Um. Yeah, we'll talk about that at the end. But so. She was like, oh, yeah, furry music. So her opinion is furry music has to be, like, mainly about furries, and you have to use your persona in marketing. Like, you have to have it either in the album or in the, you know, as your profile picture, or, like, going by your furry name or just being a furry is not enough to consider it furry music, which, you know, 
if you call yourself a furry and you decide that, hey, I make furry music, you make furry music. This is all so interpret, like, up for interpretation. But anyway, not the point. So Cassidy puts out a tweet saying that Mark, who was Cy Sable, uh, the basically founder of the furry community as we know it, who recently passed away, basically said, oh, Mark would agree with everything I'm saying because he follows me. You know, putting yep. words in the mouth of someone who recently passed away. Um, Which is, uh, in a society thing, you just don't do, A. Yeah. And it's, like, it's, it's, it is looked down upon to do that in society in general. Yeah. People got mad, obviously. Uh, <laughs> one of those people being Mark's uh, partner. One of the partners, I don't even yeah. want to say mad. People were responding like, hey, uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't yeah. speak to the dead, period. That's fair, yeah. I, I um, was mad, but I will say a lot of people were just like, hey, probably don't, like, use this person who passed away as, like, they're not the words he said, so don't do it. It's just yeah. not cool. The biggest takeaway is that is the part that people had problems with. Not not even, like, the furry musician thing. That was so out the window by this point. Like, nobody cared about that. But one of Mark's partners replied saying, hey, please don't put you know, words in my partner's mouth, and Cassidy got mad at them and started arguing with them. <laughs> and it was just like, what are you doing, man? If somebody's partner of, like, that person who passed away comes to me and says, hey, maybe don't do that, I'm gonna fucking stop doing that. <laughs> like, if I, if one of his former partners would have, like, messaged me or something and said, hey, not a big fan of the video you made, take it down, because I made a video, uh, com, com commemorating com what's the word guys commit com commemorating commit guys help please uh, com commemorating i mean commemorating. that sounds right commemorating i think you said that uh Did editing I? misha please make a fool of misha if he said it correctly <laughs> no, <please. laughs> um no if mark's partner would have messaged me and said hey i'm not a big fan of that video you made take it down I take it on. I don't care what my motivation was for making that video. It didn't come across that way to somebody close to Mark, so I would take it down. Yeah, Cassidy decided to like tell herself that everyone was mad at her furry music opinion, and that's why they were all ganging up on her. No matter how many times people said we're mad because you put words in Mark's mouth, she was like, "You guys are mad at my furry music opinion." Somebody said they're like, wow, uh, later when uh, we'll, we'll get into that. But later when uh, Cal or however you say his name uh, was like, uh, she said I was a different race than I was. She yeah. was like, we'll, uh, get, we'll get into that. But yeah, she, yeah. They, she was like, why are people mad at me for my opinion about furry music? Literally no one's talking Dude. about that anymore. Well, I'm going to be really like really cl like clear if for these years of Cassidy's drama, she has been well known that she doesn't consider you a furry producer or musician or any of that stuff if your content does not primarily focus the furry fandom is not released through the fandom if you are a successful dj or edm producer or anything uh there could be a million things and you do it outside of furry but you bring it into furry she's not going to call you a furry whatever she's sure. going to say no nah, you're that you're a dj but you're also a furry and she makes these really weird things again a lot of people don't believe in that. It is a hot take, an unpopular hot take of hers. But nobody gives a fuck to, like, have a big fight about that. It was literally mentioning Mark's name. Yeah. Uh, and, and using, like, somebody she obviously clearly didn't know well trying to, like, boost herself. Yeah. Speaking of Clays, uh, the next part does actually involve Clays. Uh, someone who has made music with Cassidy and, I guess, a game had their music... Or something like that. But, uh, um... Yes. Well, Clace is, if you don't know who Clace is, he's the developer of Winds of Change and the one before Winds of Change. Oh. He, he made those games. Oh, shit. Okay. So, so yeah. Cassidy does have a song on Winds of Change, I believe. Okay. God, that's that had to have been an ego boost. Holy shit. <laughs> but anyway. anyway so I was they live together, <laughs> so maybe that's how it happened. I don't know. Um. So, Clace made a statement saying, hey, I'm cutting ties with Cassidy. I no longer want to be associated with her music. And Cassidy, of course, responded in a very professional manner and was very respectable. And I'm talking out of my ass. Cassidy blew up about it again. And so they started Twitter beef. They started Twitter beef. Neither of you mentioned the smoking gun. I'm getting to that. We we can't we can't jump this one. So they're arguing on Twitter. They're bickering, blah, blah, blah. They're getting so mad at each other. And then Clace comes out and says, 
Cassidy, we live together. They are having this argument on Twitter, three doors down. All right. Ban not mentioned. <laughs> three doors down. They they live together. They were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, they were so, just the fact that they're having this big old Twitter beef while they're living in the same house is just crazy to me. Insane. Well, that was the thing, is is the fact that I don't know you may have them in front of you, but the whole like, yo, you know I'm POC. And Cassie's like, oh, because Cassie called him some rich white boy, didn't she? That was right, yeah. I actually don't <laughs> she have called him a now. rich white boy or something. And then Kleist was like, Cassidy, we live together. I'm 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 not white. <laughs> and she goes, <laughs> I didn't me. know that. And it's just like, huh. Use your eyes. Oh. Well, A, I'm gonna I don't want to get into this whole situation, but like both of them fucked up because you should not live together if you guys do not even know the basics about each other. And you would think you would know your friend isn't white if they're not white. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Kind of a big thing, especially if you're going to live together. But I don't know. Maybe something happened. Kind of weird. But she did throw a race at it. She Because, well, I think she was trying to say she was she's POC or something. I'm not a thousand percent sure. But he's like, look, you know, I'm POC. That's bullshit. And then she goes, no, I don't know that. And he's like, what do you yeah. mean? And, like, um, she gave, like, a which, half-assed apology. She was like, okay, I'm sorry I called you not Oh, POC. no, she did the, she literally was like, I didn't, she's like, her apology was, I didn't, uh, I'm sorry for what I said because I didn't know. Yeah, she was like, I'm sorry uh, what I with said. That, with that qualifier. Yeah, it's, once you add because or but onto an apology, it doesn't count. But, like, um, it's like, but was, if you were white, I would have been in the right. Like, no, you're still an <laughs> asshole for saying that. Yeah. And so all of this leads to, I'm not really sure how this connection happened, but one thing that we omitted this whole time, because I forgot to mention it, there is a Cassidy fan account that has been active for, I don't know, a few years now, and it was Cassidy's number one fan account. Um, mm -hmm. So this account would like go around and, you know, promote Cassidy's stuff and everything was fine. And then at one point, Things just kind of shifted, and the account immediately went on the offensive and was, like, shitting on everybody. As soon as you said something about Cassidy, they would reply to you, and they would just, like, call you names, and the te the messages were looking very similar to how Cassidy types, but there was no, like, proof of that. So, you know, people could say, oh, this is just Cassidy on an alt account trying to promote their shit, and they could be like, nah, uh there's not much you can do about it. Come oh. to find out that the original owner of that account that was a fan of Cassidy, uh, wished to cut ties with them and logged out of it in May of 2023. And Cassidy had been running the account solo ever since. So Cassidy wow. was running her own fan account, block evading, basically. Um, and attacking people. Huh? And attacking people who dared to have an opinion on the fandom's pop star. And yeah, she would also tag, like, fur cons and go around and she would promote herself too she would be like oh i can think of a certain civet who deserves a who deserves a guest of honor spot or like you know i i, I could think of someone who submitted an application two times but got rejected that would be a good fit this year uh not exactly the words that she used but very similar um to one of the tweets and so the biggest twist was the original owner recently logged into that account deleted everything changed the password, kicking Cassidy out, and then gave it to someone who rebranded it into a Cassidy Exposed account that posts receipts of all the shitty things she said throughout the years. Yep. Well, I have a couple things now to bring up. Go ahead. That's where my script ends. All right. So here's the cool thing. Uh, I decided while doing this whole little talk we've been doing, uh, I looked up Cassidy Civit on Wikifer. This thing is a thousand... A thousand percent mostly written by her. Oh, yes. Uh, you can, yes, you can read it. Uh, the largest section in it is conventions attendance, and it is an incredibly detailed experience from 2016 to now of all of the things she's done. And it obviously yep. is written by her. Um, and the very last thing, other than her, disco her discography, movies she's been in extras in, and television and stuff like that, uh, and the music thing, at the very end... Because uh, I guess uh, the eight songs written by her that 
including the promotioner's single Stay the Night, which went with Winds of Change because of Clace. They were all written, but not sang or played by her, but were released with the game. Oh, interesting. The latest update, and this is how I know this is not, this is somebody who's not objective. It says it was released on July 21st when the game came out. It goes, however, in early March of 2024, hey, yo. Game developer Clay severed ties with Civet and removed said album from all music streaming services. Damn. But doesn't go into why, and there's nothing on here about dramas or anything on this wiki for a thing. There's a small uh, portion about controversy, if I remember correctly. I, maybe. It's probably removed now, because I think she's the one that edits this. I think she comes in here and... She name searches Twitter, okay? <laughs> I yes. have a feeling... I mean, we know she does... I have a feeling she curates the shit out of, uh... Oh, because this doesn't even bring up... Wait, does it? Yeah, there it is. I was going to see if it mentioned, because I forgot about this, she got nailed for and got removed from Indie FurCon, which was last year, as Guest of Honor. That was, like, when we really wanted to talk about her. Yeah. I don't... uh, Because that was another big thing. I can't remember what she's... That was the Tiger stuff. The Tiger stuff led to her... Getting yeeted by the guest of honor of ID or IFC, at least it was su- suggested. Because I remember that all happened, and basically I think it was reported to IFC that, hey, look at these takes she has. She's not very nice. And they're like, you know what? Yeah, we don't want this as our GOH. Yeah. So, controversies, keep in mind, this entire thing is so on fucking the detailed. I am on the wiki. This entire thing is so fucking detailed. The controversies is Fernal Equinox 2023. Cassidy was cut from the dance competition last minute due to comments made by Cassidy early in the convention that had a cause for concern to staff. No comments were made from Fernal Equinox. Uh, 2023, after being previously announced as Indy Furcon's guest of honor, Cassidy was disinvited from the convention for being guest of honor. At Denver 2023, Cassidy was banned for the convention. According to Cassidy, the ban, <laughs> according to myself, is what she should say, according to Cassidy, the ban was for soliciting con attendees for merchandise sales, despite not having a uh, dealer's table at the convention. Well, yeah, that was Denver, right? Yeah, and then there's, there's uh, just nothing else about it. Well, she was trying to play a show that wasn't even listed either. Yeah, which... I think you, that was a whole thing. You can't do that. <laughs> but yeah, so... I, I completely blocked that out of my memory that Cassidy wrote her own wiki fur. Because, like, yeah. if you're listening to this episode, go look up a fur you like on wiki fur. Don't look me up because I don't have one. Uh, But, like, go look up a furry that you like on wiki fur and see how little detail there is. And, like, obviously, writing your own submission really isn't that big of an issue. But holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I guess we should have said this a long time ago. By any and all means, do not go harass this individual. Yes, yes, do not. Um, you can always do that. This is not a call to action or anything like that. Please don't. We're just yeah. making you aware of if you're not 100% sure if the Cassidy Civet is, or if you only caught a little bit of the drama or were unsure, uncertain, uncertain of what was uh, like all the drama behind that. This is who they are. Uh, but yeah, no harassment, please. No hate. It's, you know, if you want to make a little joke here, do like we are. I mean, that's up to you, but yeah, um, just like, know, just no. like she critiques people. You're allowed to critique her. <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah. <laughs> but I will not back Misha. Misha Solace cut literally that. last week telling people not to start fights. Solace this week. Get her ass. She started it. Look, I mean, if you all go and listen to her music, Actually, and then I said, if you were ever to do that, leave an honest review. But I have a feeling. That was the thing, was like, I listened to one of the songs, and like, it was okay. It's I was not... Say, I'm not going to say he's awful, but I'm not going to say it's the pop star the fandom needs. Yeah. Wants. <laughs> Ruby? I just... Yep. No, Ruby. Hi. <laughs> I'm I'm just listening. I'm just, oh, okay. I'm just here listening. Okay. I honestly, I'm... the Cassidy shit is almost hard for me to fully track. Like, it is all over the. Where place. did it come from? Where did it go? Cotton Eye Joe. It... Yeah. <laughs> where did it come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Oh, but we're we're wrapping up the end of everything. Oh, uh... not like not like the episode. We're just wrapping up. The oh, end okay. Of, yeah, yeah, the Cassidy stuff. Well, I was going to um, read this really quick, and you can keep this in or not, because this just kind of throws me. And this okay. also just keeps proving who Cassidy is. And you can try and wrap it up after I read this. This was from two days ago, so I don't know how the more recent update I think you were going to mention. Okay. Possibly. Uh, 
I don't know if it was within the last two days or not, but two days ago, if you search Cassie Civit on Google, it pops up a bunch of things, including like a, a, a recent tweet, right? And it just says, some internet folks be like, quote, oh my god, I totally have a stalker, guys. I keep posting over and over about this person, and I just know they're watching me like, oh my god, I feel so violated right now. I might just call the cops because they're totally plotting to hurt me, quote, uh, end quote. Paranoid much? Okay. <laughs> so that means somebody, somebody's out there saying that they think Cassidy Civet is stalking them. But her her response to that, which she shouldn't know, because I assume this person would have them blocked, is to mock them, with especially with the line saying, I keep posting over and over about this person. If, if, if somebody thinks they're being stalked, they're allowed to post about it as much as they want. Yeah. But yeah, this is the kind of person she is. Like, literally, she's calling them paranoid much. And obviously, she's ban evading or block evading because, yeah. I mean, how else would you know? Your first thing you do if you have a stalker is block them. Yeah. And if that person doesn't hasn't blocked them, they should. <laughs> actually, um, actually, uh, according to statistics, you shouldn't block a stalker. What is that? You should mute because sometimes a block oh. can cause them to escalate. Oh, that's fair. So both Clayson and Cassidy are close to a con called uh, Vancouver. And so Clace was pushing really hard. I'm going to go ahead and say too hard to get Cassidy banned. Uh, or her events canceled from this convention, not necessarily banned. It was um, bad. I, I think it was bad usage of words. I Yeah. And so after some back and forth, finally the Vancouver, somebody reached out to Clace and got information from them. And they did, in fact, ban Cassidy from what she calls her home con. Which... Well, wait, did they, did they ban her from the con, or sorry, did they just sorry, remove her panels? No, yep, they removed the panels, sorry. So That's... she's not allowed to make content through their panels there, but she, I think, can still go she to the con. She is allowed to attend. Yeah, that was my bad. Sorry. Um, yeah. Different distinction. It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my mic. And so, Clay did it in a way that could have been interpreted as, hey... If you don't do this, your reputation is going to be heavily damaged. And that kind of sounds like a PR threat if you're currently under fire, you know? Like, yeah, it, it definitely read the the way it was read in the email exchange or whatnot to Vancouver from Clay's. It read, hey, if you don't do what I'm asking you, I'm going to make it a problem. And if and, and this is where I think, again. I think if somebody ever comes to say that, like, of course the con has the right to say, oh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I made a video about, like, let's say Megaplex, and I was like, man, if they don't do this, horrible things are going to happen. Like, their reputation is going to be in the ground. Like, you know, me as a content creator with an mm -hmm. audience, uh, Clay also has an audience. I don't know if they necessarily make content, but they also have an audience, which means if you have an audience your audience might go do stuff. Right, um, it's definitely a possibility, right? Yeah. And so you saying, hey, there's going to be dra like bad things are going to happen if you don't ban this person. That's not how they worded it. Um, well, they said... No, it was, it was like your reputation is going to be hurt yeah, yeah. If, you don't, if you don't do something, basically. And it definitely, again, it definitely, in the tone and the way it was written, it seemed like it was like, I'm personally going to do something about it versus... You, hey, if, if these panels are found out to have happened, you're probably going to get some negative publicity, which, I mean, realistically, I don't think anybody would show up to the panels. I don't think anybody would have gave a shit, but still. Yeah. And there's like, other people that they can put in those panel slots, so. Like, I know it's it's a hot topic in the, like, content creation sphere, but, like, if you have an audience, you have influence, right? And... Mm -hmm. You have a responsibility. You curate the type of audience you curate. And so if you are like constantly having beef, because this would have all been different if they emailed Clace, because they emailed Clace and were like, hey, we're getting rid of Cassidy's events. However, we're going to send you a warning because this sounded like you were threatening the convention. And Clace decided to blow that up in multiple tweet threads and mm -hmm. just like air out all of that on Twitter. That's the part where they kind of lost me, and that is not necessary in the slightest. Take care of it uh, behind closed doors. If they got banned for it, then maybe, but, like, yeah, it 
people don't like to like content creators don't like to admit that they have some influence on their audience because like oh what if you know what if one of my viewers goes and like hits somebody with their car suddenly i'm responsible like no but if a bunch of my audience goes and hits people with their cars then it's like you know especially if i was like hey go hit people with your cars don't do that mm-hmm. this is a disclaimer do not do that but like yeah, don't do that you know hate to use this person as an example but like leafy is here you think his audience was full of wonderful bright-minded individuals no you cultivate your audience yes. i always stand stand by that yeah you know i try to curate a space of positivity and like if i talk about drama i talk about drama it's important sometimes and i try to like come out of situations looking at both sides and analyzing things and tr- i try not to take Cheap shots. Uh, free for all was an exception. That was cheap shot city. I'm gonna <laughs> full on admit shots. those free shots. But like nine times out of ten, I try to curate a place of hey, we could talk about this, but we shouldn't like go and bully the other side. Which reminder, don't don't message Cassidy. Don't say anything to them. Yeah, we'll do the right thing and actually tell our people not to do things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there, there is there is a level of responsibility to that in the sense of like if you have a platform. And you are talking about a person, uh, uh, and like I, I think it's very important to say don't go harass that person. But I also don't think it fully exonerates you because you know that people are curious and uh, would do their own research, and they should. You should do yeah. your own research. Never take a content creator's word for somebody. I know I've yeah. been blocked by people who like somebody said Ruby's bad. Okay, blocked, and they yeah, like they didn't even know why. Yeah. <laughs> Like definitely do your own research, uh, but but come at every every person on the internet. Be just be reminded that there is a human being behind the screen. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't let the screen be like that barrier that allows you to say something mean or nasty or evil. Yeah, uh, I get what you're saying, by the way. And one of the big things I wanted to say is like uh, a lot of this comes, I think, comes down to uh, it's like like us. We're like we're clearly not aggro against Cassidy. We're clearly not calling or have mentioned like causing harm to them. But there's been instances where creators were like, fucking hate that person. I'm gonna hurt them. I'm gonna I, I wish I could kill them. You know, they say very direct things, but they're trying to say them like obviously it's like in, in the moment I'm reacting for content. And then they at the end of all this like rant and rage, they'll be like, oh by the way, um don't go harm them. Well, then you get the the ranged followers that do do that, but because you were so passionate, they're like, no, uh, you wanted me to do this, and that's yeah. when you get the news articles. Okay, yeah. Um, so I do agree. I, I I think for most part, yeah, just it's one of those things where God, you just we didn't we waited so long to make this because we we're like, man, hope Cassie just stops. Yeah, she's like ninety percent of her problem if she just didn't fucking say anything. She just made music, would be fine. Yeah, it's like the absolute latest update as of recording this today, March 6th, is according to Clay's, Cassidy has deleted uh, Twitter off of her phone and might be seeking therapy. I'm going to be the first to say, you know, I genuinely hope this is true and I genuinely hope she does and I genuinely hope she gets the help she needs. I don't know if I buy it. I'm very pessimistic about it, but I'm not going to sit here and like discourage her or say, you know... I, as it stands, I am done posting about her. I'm mm-hmm. I'm not going to make, I was planning on maybe making a video about it. I'm no longer going to do that until proven otherwise. If someone is going to seek the help they need, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to further post about them. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's totally like, let's see if she actually does or not. Again, I read a tweet that was from two days ago, so I'm not sure between then and now is that when they decided, all right, I'm deleting Twitter, I'm going offline, and I'm going to go get help. Again, if that's the truth, more power to her. Like, I want her to do better. Yes. Um, I, I think in the years that have happened, you know, it, it, it's it's something that she d- should work on. Like, it's it's not, it can't be good, like, mentally. To, again, call yourself the fandom's villain and think that 99% of us dislike you. Like, that's not a good thing. No. And, like, so. you know, there are people out there that genuinely just hope the, for the worst for her. If you ever find yourself in a similar situation and there's people just, like, dogging on you and hoping the worst for you, ignore those people. 
and you know get, if, get away in any way you can sometimes sometimes you do have to go offline sometimes you have to disconnect yeah like i genuinely if if it's true i genuinely applaud cassidy for deleting twitter off of her phone that is a huge first step for her that's it's a huge that's just big and i congratulate her if that's the case i really hope she sticks with it you know we might be telling a different story in the after bark episode if things go yeah. awry but like if it doesn't man i i'm rooting for her you know i want the best for everybody until proven otwise um and like, unless you're like a nazi uh, yeah. Also, yeah, even in that. <laughs> no, but it's like, true. It's true that even in the case that that's the difference, in my opinion, between uh, I, I like certain types of politics because these are these are social politics we're talking about. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are either fundamentally against somebody for what they are, being gay, uh, being a certain race, something like that, or you hate how somebody is acting slash thinks. But you, they can change. You could stop being a Nazi. You can, Cassidy, you can stop being a bitter <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, editing Misha's gonna censor no, that, that one. No, that fucking stays. <laughs> no, my God. I don't know if YouTube <laughs> likes that word. Did we, in the, in the Cassidy thing, I can do a quick wrap-up on the uh, R Alliance shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want to end on a positive note. Solace is all about positivity. Somewhere. Check out my TikTok. <laughs> He was so plugged. Bro's plugging his TikTok. It's all Ruby's fault. Ruby, we created a monster. I, I'm we blaming, sure did. We, I'm blaming did Ruby we... the most. I, I told you for things. years to we, get on TikTok. We need to make TikTok show this, and I finally have one blow up. And now that's like, because I told I knew you'd have fun with it, and I was right. Oh. Hashtag Ruby's always right. Yeah. Hashtag <laughs> the cat knows best. Okay. Let's not let's not get ahead You're of ourselves. You're fucking orange cat too. Troublemaker. Yes, I have orange cat energy. You really fucking. do. Thank you. They, I'll take that as such a compliment. It's like All right. we'll, fucking. we'll message you and be like, "Hey, are we good to record today?" And you're like, "Oh, I'm in Memphis." It's like, "What the fuck are you doing in Memphis?" Oh, that's because I have like, uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm your friend that goes on random side quests. I know. Oh, you definitely do. I have my big cat Whitney saying hi for some reason. Hello. Hello. Hi, Whitney. How everyone, do everyone, say hi to Whitney. Hi, Whitney. Hi, Whitney. Right. I can't remember. Oh, hang yeah. on. I'll say it in your uh, uh, mother tongue. Mew. <laughs> Mew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Solace. End on a positive note. On a positive note, but it's gonna start off bleak. It's gonna be rough. So our alliance, uh, the online furry music label, which by the way we did an interview with their creator or like the yeah the creator the owner, uh, Finn. You can yeah. check out that episode later after this ends. They were trying to do a live event, meaning they had several because there's I think there's quite a few now artists that work with our alliance uh, that are part of the music label, uh, and they had worked with and set up a live event. For uh, a New York City event called Trans, uh, I believe the venue was called Trans Pecos, and this was in months, 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 four months even. They uh, planned this event out at this venue. Uh, at the beginning of the four months, uh, they had conversations with the the business. The business said everything's legit. This is what you're going to be cost, and this is what you know everything's going to be up front. And here's our contract. Two weeks, or no, not two weeks, two days. A two day. Two days. It was. Like two or three. Three days. days. Uh, like three days ago, they made their mind up. I'm reading some of the stuff because they posted it on their website. They said we didn't know it was a fetish event, uh, labeling furry as fetish event. Uh, that they think by uh everybody wearing furry gear, furry stuff, it's gonna cut down on drinks. So they wanted to pay instead of just splitting the drinks costs or whatever with the uh with our alliance. They're like, now you're going to have to pay a $1,000 bar fee. Uh, all this shit. Where basically they went from like, they, they basically doubled up how much our alliance was going to have to come up with. A couple of days before the event. Literally, some of the mus musicians, the, I think there was four artists that were performing, were in the air. Like, or getting on their planes to go to the, like, to fly across the country. Or possibly world, I don't know exactly who got sent where. To, to play this event, and the, the venue basically backed out because our alliance couldn't cover. Our alliance still ended up losing money on the event, but in a very quick turnaround, our alliance was able to find another venue, which I was trying to find, and I could not find it. 
They don't. They they just mentioned the cancel. Let me go look up. I want to see who actually held the real thing. I'm gonna just not talk anymore. I found it. I found it. So the uh the the venue in Brooklyn named Purgatory and Kind Monster helped put on a show. Uh, I believe that's what they're. Yeah, it's it's Purgatory at Brooklyn. Yes, people. Uh, I think over thirty plus people like came in or more. A furries for the event and stuff is. A pretty good success. Three of the four artists were able to make that one because of everything that went down. And yeah, it was uh, overall uh, a good like turnaround for literally like not. It was less than three days for the the venue being like, nah, fuck you guys. Yeah, that's because that, if you watch, if you go back and watch the R Alliance uh, interview, like I think we even talked about how they're like still not. They're like still in the red. Yeah. So like them running a live event was is it is it came out of pocket. It came out of their pocket, not like the artist's pocket, by the way. Yeah. It came out of one of their backers' pockets, basically. And you know, the whole point is if enough people show up, we cover it back and cool. If not, we lose a little bit, but we provide an event for our community. Awesome. And that's what our alliance has really been around. It's been like, you know, we'll take some personal losses if we can provide for others. And it's been really, really kind. So again, they're super positive, super awesome. Find that shit down in the description below uh, if you want to help support uh, not only furry artists, but a literal furry online music label that helps a lot of furry artists. Speaking of furry, <laughs> that, you know what? That's a great fucking turnaround for our episode. <laughs> yeah, we did it. We ended on a positive note. Thank God. Good job. Thank God. Hey, thank you for being here. This is the end of the episode. Whoa. You've made it. Whoa. But we got to do a thing called the Patreon shout out because, oh, I'm crashing. Excuse you. We don't have to do. Wait. We get to do. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? He said, hold I on, heard, I'm crashing. <laughs> I heard he had like a computer voice and said, I'm crashing. I assume that's what that, I assume that's what the joke <laughs> no. was. No, I think he like actually crashed. I think his computer actually crashed. Continuing on. Solace, buddy. <laughs> so let's, uh, so here's the, uh, add, add the boot. Add the boot? All right. Yeah. And I'll, I'll read the, I'll read the list. <laughs> All righty. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you, Heartless Hero. Thank you, Pip the Badger. Uh, thank you, Raze. Thank you, Feel Firefox. Thank you, Coralina R. Thank you, Kai. Thank you, Quint. Thank you, uh, Carm. Carm. There's two. You I can do this. I. Car <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm crashing. Think of the flower. Think of the flower. Car. Carnelian. Carnelian fox. Okay. Can you hear me? Thank you, Steam Pony and Akara. Hello? You all. Hello. Welcome back, Hello. Solus. Okay. You know, in the year we've been almost been doing this, uh, <laughs> it fucking finally crashed. I just love, you were just like, oh, thank you for, uh, oh, I'm crashing. And that was all we heard from you. Yeah. Oh, see, that's the funny thing is it, it will let my mic work for a few seconds. And then the, all my screens go black. All of my computer fans go in the hyperdrive. And then I just have to hard reboot it with the button. Oh, jeez. It's been doing this since it came out of the box in like 2021. Nice. I love just that. didn't have a replacement, so I couldn't just send it back. All right, sorry, back to... <laughs> You're good. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Patreons, mean, something we, we... about wanting to do it, not needing to do it, or not having to do it. It's a, it's a choice because we love you guys. Yeah. No, we, no, we read it while you were gone. Yeah, we Funny. read it. Yeah. You're amazing. Now, what about this thing we do after? Uh, if you're here for the premiere, hi. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you're listening to this on a later date, we do an After Bark episode at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Right after this premieres at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. See, we're shaking it up a little bit. We're saying it in the opposite order. So, normal episode, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. After Bark, 5 p.m. Uh, we just kind of chat. <coughs> Leave that in. We just kind of chat. Shoot the Why shit. Why are we, like, not... We're not functioning today. Dude, I... <laughs> My my meds are wearing off. I don't I don't know what your ah. guys' is problem. What you're are. seeing right now is what the live stream is. It's uncut, unedited, and kind of stupid. Some no, it is. It's just stupid. It's, it's like my dick. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I kinda. always am. Ruby's always right. <laughs> oh my god. All right, fly guys. Hey, you know what's important to me? You. My Google. 
my Google uh, saved my Sudoku, so is I this, don't have to restart. Is it? I thought you were like two away. Oh no, I, I've done another one since. Oh, is this like? Is this part of the episode? Should I hit stop yeah. recording? And yeah, I just figured I'd see my Sudoku oh, guy okay. saved. <laughs> Thank you.